everyone, this is Lisa Knight, the Las Vegas Sew Girl, coming to you from my studio tonight. I am working on a dream big panel, and this is the panel. It's hooped in a monster snap hoop by Dime. I'm using Kingstar metallic thread. And in the bobbin, I have the fine line 60 weight thread by Exquisite. So I'm going to show you how to go about making this into a custom quilted project where you can choose each one of these panels and add a custom quilting. I am using a Solaris 2. And we will see how it works. So right now I'm in IQ Designer and I'm going to want to go up and scan this panel. So I'm going to click on the leaf and right below here it's asking me if I want to do an image scan, a line scan, or an illustration design. For this one, I want to do an image scan. So I want to take a picture of this quilt where I want to work. So I'm just going to press scan. And it's going to tell me that the frame is going to move and it's going to scan what's in the frame. So right now it has started the scan and Slars does a really good job of scanning whatever's in your hoop and it takes a moment to get it done. But it's taking in a lot of information. Once it's finished scanning, um, there will be an image on the screen of what was in the hoop in the area that I want to work with. You want to keep your hands out of the scanned area. And sometimes, depending on the lighting in your room, you may need to dim a light if you're getting any kind of a glare on your scan been doing this this evening and haven't had any issues. So the area that I want to want to create my stitching for is right here. I'm going to switch to the other camera. All right, so I'm going to turn this camera just a little bit so you can see this better. So you can see a faint image on the screen right now, um, but up here at the top where you see this little sliding bar, you can tap on this and bring the darkness of the image up. That's about what I want. And I'm gonna use the stylus that comes with the machine. And there are other styluses out on the market, but I actually find that this one works really well for this process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my um, fills right here. Let me turn this just a little bit so you can see it. Fills are right here. And I'm going to click on them. And I'm also going to choose the, those fancy fills for lack of a better name for them. And with the Solaris 2, you have several, 42 to be exact, fills. And for this one, I think I'll use one of these new ones. This leaf pattern is really nice. Also, I haven't done this one. So I'm gonna use 033. And say okay. The last thing I need to do is choose a color. And some colors show up much better than others. I find that green, blue, 
show up and it, it depends on the color of the project you're working on because mine is red i'm not going to choose red and i find that most of the yellows are too faint to really show up very well so once i've got all of that now i'm going to take my stylus and i'm going to draw an outline around the item that i want to fill in now you don't have to be perfect and precise. You just need to get pretty close. And then you want to make sure that you close that area. And then I'm going to come over here to the bucket and touch inside that area that I chose. Now the reason I said you don't have to be perfect and precise is because we're going to come in and we're going to fine tune it some. So right now I can see that there are areas that I did not get. But one of the great things with the Solaris is that you can zoom in. And I'm going to zoom in 400%. And then I'm going to come up here and click on the pan tool and pan up. To where I can see the edges of my design. I may want to make this a little bit darker. So that made a difference in me being able to tell where the design needs to go and where it needs to stop. On these Dream Big panels, it is a little difficult in some areas to tell exactly where you want to be working. So now that I've panned it to where I want to work, I'm going to come back and select my paintbrush again. And I'm going to start filling the area. And I clicked on the pan tool. That's that little hand up here. And grab the paintbrush again. You just want to kind of make a little paintbrush motion. And you want to pick up your stylus periodically because every time that you don't do it and then you need to change something and you need to go back and erase, you know, go use your undo key, it's going to erase everything that you just did. So you want to pick up the stylus periodically just so that you don't end up having to go back and redo what you just did. I like to touch on it further in and work my way to the area that I want to work on. I lift it. And this comes with practice. You're, you're not going to be able to do this super smoothly the first couple times you do it. But as you practice and get better at it, it it'll become much easier. So I've panned it down to a new area. I'm going to touch on my paintbrush again. I'm going to go back and grab my panning hand and I can see here that I have missed a lot of area and sometimes I like to shrink it back down so I can see for sure because like you can kind of I don't know if you can see it very well here I'm going to turn off the grid it might be a little less visually distracting so you can definitely see that I've missed an area there. And if you accidentally touch the screen and you need to erase it, it's just, you've got an undo key right here that gets you out of trouble every time. So I want to zoom in one more time. I'm gonna to go to 400% because then I can really see the difference. So right there, and I'm gonna come back up here and I can see that I probably need to grab right there. And what I'm going to do is actually make another full um, circle of that area so I don't have to keep painting it. I'm just going to come just like that and touch the paint bucket, touch inside. Now I've been able to grab that whole area. I'm going to pan down some, a little further.
And see, I, I went out of the lines, but that's okay. We can fix that. It's not a big deal. So here, I think I'll just do a little painting. Well, I think my batteries might be getting a little low. But that's okay. Now, doing what I like, what I just did, you want to be careful to make sure that you're not leaving any areas un unfilled because what happens is is then the stitch area and i don't know if you can see it but right there you can see a little bit of red shining through right here and i need to swipe over it to get rid of it so i want to come back here and clean this up just a little bit first i'm going to swoop a little bit then i'm going to grab my eraser tool and with the eraser, especially with the zoom feature, you want to touch back here and move in. With 400 zoom, it's not nearly as important to do that. But when you get up to the 800 and 1600, that circle that you see that pops up around my, my stylus becomes huge. And it will erase an area before you realize it. But like I said, it's not a big deal because we can always do the undo. So like right there, I took a little bit more out than I wanted to, so I can undo it. Come back and grab that out of there. This is really all I really wanted was right here. And maybe clean it up just a bit there. So now I'm gonna pan over some more. And I wanna tidy this up just a bit. I need a little bit more here. And a little bit less over here. We just go around and double check the areas where we might need to erase a little bit or we might need to add a little bit. Now one of the things, because I am left-handed, and one of the things that I have an, a little bit of a challenge with, and so I'm guessing other people do too, is the screen is wonderful. I love its... Um, is responsiveness but being left-handed I tend to lay my hand here and what I've found works really well is to take a just a piece of fabric or a cloth and lay my hand on that and then I don't have a problem with actually causing the screen to to move or to react So I just want to put a little bit more right there. And remember I said it's not a problem if you accidentally go out. Because you can just come back and give it a little shave. I can see that there's a good size area right here. bit more there and unless you go out by a lot it's not really gonna make that much difference you're probably gonna see it but nobody else will so here I'm gonna come in to the 800% so that I can see this a little bit better for erasing. Now watch what happens when I put the stylus on the screen. See how much bigger that dot is? So 
the dot indicates where the erasing is happening, not where you've got the stylus touching the glass. So you can see how that could be a little challenging because you think you're far enough away here, but when you touch it and it activates, it chopped a little bit out of the area I didn't want to go to. But hit undo and it's back. So start down here and work yourself in again. Same thing up here. And I can actually see my previous stitching through this because it's not completely opaque. So it's a little translucent so you can see where the stitching was before or the difference in the fabric colors. So now I'm just going to take a little cruise around this petal area and make sure I got everything I wanted to. Looking good. I think we're in good shape. Hmm. Maybe right here, just a little bit. Sorry, my dog is in here coughing. He got one of my USB drive covers and chewed it up today and it got a little bit caught in his throat. And there's a cursor on the screen because I do have a wireless mouse plugged in. So I'm gonna unplug that right now so you don't get confused. Oh, see, I see something right here that I need to go back and grab my paintbrush because there is a spot that is not covered. And this is what you want to do when you go around and do your checking is just make sure that you don't have anything that's just glaring and you know, extra stitches that don't necessarily need to happen. But it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with it. I might put a little bit more, All right. and in fact, I want to bring it back to more like 400. Put a little bit more right here to there. Okie dokie. So now we have, and I'm going to bring it down to the 100%. We've filled in the area. And we've got, you know, the stitching where we want it. We're going to go to next. And next is going to take us to the screen where we can adjust the size and a few other things. You know what? I think I want to put a different color so y'all can see that better. So I'm just going to come up here to this tile and choose, hmm, maybe I'm going to choose this more orangey yellow and see if that makes a difference. It does. Not a great difference, but a bit of difference. So now I have some choices. And really for this, there's only about three choices that I'm going to work with. I'm going to work with my 100%, my size, and I'm going to work with my angle of rotation. And I'm going to work with my thickness. This is a Solaris 2 um, and a, a Solaris 1 with the upgrade opportunity right here. Come on. And I'm going to choose the thinner one because the thicker one is multiple passes over the same area. And for some things, it looks really nice. But for this, I do not want it because I'm using the metallic thread. It'll get kind of scratchy. And then I'm going to come back up here to the angle. I kind of like the angle that it's going, but let's play around with it just a little bit and see if changing it makes any interesting difference. Oh, it just turned it downward. So it's kind of going this way instead of outward. I kind of like that. It'll, it should be interesting. 
And I don't think I really want to change the size of it. I like the, the scale of the 100%. But you can go down to 50% and you can go all the way up to, I believe, 200%. So at this point, I'm happy with it. I'm going to say set. Now, if you wanted to be able to come back and change it and update it and do things to it, you would want to put that in memory. But... Um, I've done this so many times that I'm pretty used to it, what to expect as far as the results. So now I'm going to go to my embroidery and I'm going to use my um, projector to get alignment and placement just right. I'm just going to turn on the projector. I'm also going to come up here and turn off the light. And on page four of your settings, you have the opportunity to be able to turn off the dashboard or the runway light, which is going to make looking at the projector so much more vivid and easier to see. And I have mine set to um, a dark background because this, this, um, project is on a dark burgundy red background. You come over here and change the camera over to the machine bed so you can see it. So now you can see where the leaf is. You're only going to see about a five by five three area because the projector is so close to the bed of the machine but on the screen of the of the Solaris I can move the area so I can see how it's going to line up with the edge of my petal which is actually doing a really good job it looks great but if I needed to I could actually make it a little bit bigger or I can move it down a little bit. Let's kind of see where it's at here. That looks pretty good. So does that need to come up a little bit. Maybe rotate it a tiny bit so that it's not touching. But I'm not going to get super worried about a little bit of overlap because honestly you're not going to notice it. Take one more look around here. And at this point, if I were to say, oh, you know what? I really need this to be a little bigger. I can actually go back to embroidery edit. Let me bring it back to the machine screen. And I can make it bigger. I can go to my embroidery edit. I can click on size. Um, where I saw that I needed a little bit more was this way. So I'm just going to choose this little arrow, rectangle with the arrows going out, top to bottom. And I'm going to give it two taps and go back and take a look and see what, what it did. If that took care of it. So, let's see. See, with my finger, I can move the, um, the projector to whatever area I want to look at. So, let's see how that did. That's not bad. Let's look at the bottom, though, because in, with that type of sizing, you're going to get it going in both directions. Mm. It's a little longer at the bottom, but not so much that I'm real concerned about it. And it is just right at the top. So I'm going to bump it up one or two spots. Come over here. Then go back down to the bottom real quick. And you notice as I'm moving the screen or the 
placement of the projector, it moves as a hoop to the place that, that I'm, I'm moving it to. All right, we're good. Okay, doke. So now I'm gonna bring you back to the machine screen. And here at this point, I wanna turn the lights on on the bed of the machine again. So I'm gonna go back up to my um, settings paper up here, right here. And then I'm going to go to page four And that brings me to where I can turn the light on or off. So you have on or off and five degrees of brightness. I have the one that they default to from the factory is the one that's surrounded in black. And that is the one I like to have. I like brightness where I'm working. So now all I need to do is make sure that my thread is threaded. Say okay. I've got a green light over here, go back to the bed of the machine, and we'll check out the stitching. Cross fingers, everything works fine. And then this is going to take um, about five minutes to stitch. But isn't that fun? This is one of the things I find most relaxing about machine embroidery is creating something and then getting to watch it stitch, the whole process of it. But I actually love just listening to the machine hum along. These magnetic hoops work wonderfully for this. And one of the best things is that when you're working on something, you don't have to take the whole quilt off of the machine and go somewhere else to hoop it. I basically, once this is done, I release the top ring, I set it over the top of the machine, adjust the quilt to the next position, and we're in business again. Dime is got so many innovative ideas and ways to help you get what you want to do creatively done. So I hope you enjoyed this um, and I will be doing some more videos like this and posting them up on my pages and have fun everyone. You don't know what to do with your time, spend it in the sewing room, spend it doing something creatively. It'll put a smile on your face and probably the smile on someone else's face too. Take care everyone. Thanks for dropping by. I'll talk to you soon.